Realistic Bunny Rabbit Acrylic Painting Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi everybody! In today's video I'm going to be showing you a really cute little bunny painting that I did that has a kind of a pastel bokeh style background and then a realistic bunny in the foreground as well as, this isn't actually in the tutorial, but I put some flowers and some greenery around the outside, almost like a wreath, even though I actually don't like wreaths just in general. I think this turned out perfect. I just love the way it is. It's now hanging on the wall until the Easter season is over, but I hope you guys like this as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. <laughs> I'm going to start by doing the background with just a quick layer of a pastel green. Really any pastel will count or will will work. Um, you just want something so that no white sneaks through, no plain white canvas. Just add that nice little, nice little base layer and then with an airbrush grab a whole bunch of pastels and just go to town with that. I started with blue, added some pink, some purple, and then I finished with little spots, little sections of white on the very last layer. So now to paint my little bunny rabbit, I'm going to start with the hind quarters of the rabbit that you see coming kind of like around the sides. And then I'm going to add a, just a first little layer of color over the body. And I went through after I did this and I added the little fur texture. But having this is a great way just to get your first layer of color down so you know kind of a, it's kind of like a guide to figure out what you're going to do with those little fine details. So with a really super short striper brush, you're going to want to go through and just take in with the same different collection of tans and browns that you used for that first layer. Go through and add the second layer. And you don't necessarily, if you have one section that's a certain color, like a certain cream color, you don't want to use that same color to add your fur texture to because cream on cream, it's not going to show up. So you either want to, in the beginning, kind of have a set my like okay so all my fur texture is going to be a little bit darker than my base color or it's going to be a little bit lighter than my base color and depending on how you want your bunny's fur to look is going to be which way you decide to go with that and I went with a shade darker for everything which is going to give the fur kind of a ticked appearance and so that's when like um, my cat Max she's got ticked fur so the little end of the little fur for the little hair strands is actually darker than the undercoat which gives it more of like a like a wild appearance, not like that really soft purebred bunny rabbit appearance. It gives it a little bit different texture. And that's kind of what I was going for with my rabbit. I wanted him to look like he was just, you know, your everyday bunny. So giving it that slightly darker layer on top helps with helps with that. Plus doing just a plain coloring pattern. I know my mother had all kinds of she raised bunnies when she was younger. And so she talks about this one and that one. I personally, I don't know all that much about the different bunny breeds, but she'd be like, no, you should have done a Dutch lap eared or whatever there. And I'm like, I don't know. I like this one. He's, he's a plain Jane rabbit. And I like that. So then just keep going through over all of your fur, kind of blend the two colors together. One thing I like to do when I'm doing, like I said, you want to go like a shade darker, but you don't want to just have these different blocks of fur colors where it's like this one is chocolate brown. And then this one is caramel. And then this one's cream. You want to variegate the colors a little bit. So I like to open all of my paints or have all of my paints out of my palette and have the full array of colors that I plan on using at my disposal at all times because if they're there and they're looking at you you have a better chance of using them which helps unless you have to like go get one and then you're gonna be like yeah that's fine but if you have them all out in the beginning then you can just really easily go you know what I'm gonna add just a little bit of this color in here and the more you do that and the more you integrate different colors together the more realistic the fur will have the more depth the painting will have and the more life and fun the whole thing will be on the tummy of my rabbit I want it to look a little bit whiter a little bit lighter and brighter so I added it's just some little white hairs in there. I went through with some cream colors and added some highlights of that color all throughout the fur here and there just to spice it up a little bit. Some really dark brown right along the chin line to help define between the head and the neck. And keep going like that. Another thing that you can do, which I do with a lot of them, my animals actually, and all of my baby animal paintings that I did uh, for Melody's Room about a year ago. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I was painting those a year ago. But um, with those, what I did is I took and I did not a super detailed body on them. So I did just kind of like that first layer of color, a little bit more detailed than that, a little bit more of a fur texture, but not with all these little defined lines. That way you had your background, which would be that bokeh style, and then a mid ground, which would be the body. And then it would really stand off and make the head show up, which the head would be super detailed like the body is. And that's another style that you can go with. And something that I thought about doing with this bunny painting, I thought, you know what, I want the whole thing to be super furry. So I decided just to go through it this way but that would be a choice that you could definitely do. So now for my bunny's ears, that's the next thing that I did. So I'm kind of working from back to forward, back to front. And so the ears, even the back of the ear, so the ear that's facing away from the camera, away from the viewer, that one you can still see a little bit of that pink color through because there 
isn't necessarily hair covering the entire ear. So you want to blend in just a little bit of a warm pink color on both the back of the ear and inside the ear that's facing you. And then have the ears kind of just blend in into the head and add all of those colors. On this bunny rabbit, I went with the classic little highlights around the eyes and above the nose with a lighter shade of fur and then just down kind of around the chin and the jawline. Add some with some diluted brown paint at some veins inside the ears. That's something that's kind of fun to do. It's really um, a quick, easy detail that adds so much. Um, and diluted paint does a great job of adding veins because you can still see the colors and everything that's happening underneath, but it adds that little bit of depth. Then I did the white details on the face, so I went right around the edge of the ear that's facing forward, then along the jawline, around the eye, with really nice bright white lines that's going to make your bunny the face really stand out. That's kind of part of the whole um, thing with doing the mid-ground with the body, is that it makes the head stand out a little bit more, but in this case, to do that without having to worry about the different levels of detail, I decided to add some really bright white lines here and there around the face that's just going to kind of draw the eye there. And then really black for the eye, which is the only place on the painting that I used black. Um, so just keep adding your little fur, little fur details. With the rabbit's face, and actually with any animal's face, but with the rabbit's face, you really need to make sure that you get the fur direction on the face going the right way. Because if you don't, it's just going to look a little bit odd, like he's put together wrong. So the fur on animals, they go straight up from the nose and then they just kind of like fan out around the eyes and then down the face. When you're doing that, if it's not something that you've done too often, it's maybe one of your first animals that you've painted, do just a couple lines here and there, have a picture next to you, and then just put lines in areas that you know it's like put them down from the face and then put them up from the nose and have just a line here and there as kind of a guiding point as your map so that when you go through and you add all those little fur lines you know that you have to connect point a to point b and you can just fill in the lines to do that which is definitely a helpful a helpful little thing to do add those same little fur lines all over the ear and on the ear that is facing away from you like i said it's not completely fur covered so you can see some of that fleshy tone coming through you want to slowly fade the lines so they become more and more sparse as they get towards that area of pink on the ear so it still has some fur but just it kind of fades into skin so add all of those and on my bunny's face i went through first with a full layer of kind of my main fur color which was a really pretty kind of a flan color so when I the color that I look I'm like oh it looks just like flan um but I like a caramel color so I did that on all of pretty much across the ears across the face and I use that for the majority of the body too and that way you have just kind of a base layer and I did want the face to be a bit more textured a bit more detailed and if you do that with just a full layer of one color and then you add just little hints of different colors in there a little bit more softer looking than on the body where it was just a whole mix of colors and that gives the face fur a bit more a bit more softness like I said it makes it just look a little bit I mean because our hair there is shorter and it is a little bit softer than the rest of the body just continue like I said and there you can see how I kind of added a line part way down the nose of where the fur was headed and that helps just to kind of get the direction going in the right way because it's really easy to just kind of get in the zone with making these little lines and all of a sudden you're like wait a second that doesn't look right and you have to paint over it and I don't know if you guys are like me but I love doing things the first time when I have to redo something and do it a second time it is like the least my least favorite thing ever so I very reluctantly will ever paint something twice so this is probably my only bunny um and it will take quite a bit for me to paint another one and that's just kind of how I go I like to paint something once and it's like okay I've done that and then I'm and then I'm done so if I have to redo something it's like oh man I don't want to do that but some people like to sometimes like, you know what I'm loving I know there's a certain artist that I follow that paints horses and she just loves to paint horses and she paints horse after horse and then you know everybody's got their different different styles with things I like to paint something once and then move on but I'm adding some quite a bit of a lighter color on the forehead and down the bridge of the nose, adding some darker colors underneath the eye. That's really going to set off that lighter highlight for a color around the eye where there's some white. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to paint the nose with a darker shade of brown and blending in just a hint of that pink color that I used in the ear. Adding that little bit of a split lip. Add some nice little eyeliner for my bunny. Painting the eyes is always my personal favorite part. Add the pupil color, blend in some brown to that as well. Add a couple little lines going out from that, a little bit of shadowing lines around the eye. Some nice little eyelashes for your bunny, a couple whiskers here and there, nice and squiggly wiggly whiskers. Some really nice highlights on the eye. If you want, you can use some pastel colors for highlighting in the eye. 
kind of bring in some of those background colors into the bunny. And that's it. With the flowers around, I just got a cheap little bouquet that and I took it all apart and then I hot glued them in that nice little fan around it. So I hope you guys like this as much as I do. I absolutely loved painting this bunny. And please share any recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!